Hi everybody, I'm back with a new video. This video is a little bit different than the others that I've done in that uh, the supplier that I use for my blanks for sublimation, Vinyls Galore, has offered me this stainless steel cup and it's a twist off on the top with a full aluminum liner, a straw, and as you can see this is fully aluminum and it's an 11 ounce size tumbler or cup and this straw snaps into the bottom like that and then you can lift this and uh, drink through so it's kind of like a sippy cup I guess but they uh, they offered this up to me because this is a new product that they're going to be uh, putting in their catalog I believe and this is a full as you can see the the non-white there's no white on it like a traditional or a typical um, sublimation tumbler so we want to see how sublimation will go onto this and how it's going to look. Now a couple things that we have to keep in mind is that sublimation ink is translucent so you're going to see any color underneath this dye. It's not going to be like a paint or a vinyl application that you're not going to be seeing through. Um, so I put this together uh, one of my favorite sayings, one quotes that I have and uh, this messy bun with the glasses, without the glasses, different versions of glasses is, is pretty popular right now. I've extracted, this was originally in a leopard skin and I extracted it and I added red which kind of looks a little brown right now but remember sublimation ink pops when it's been heated and the Canadian maple leaf and then I just did the other one red because red and white on here didn't really know how to do it. Now I can't print white. I don't have white ink. So in all these negative spaces it's actually going to be the metal shining through including around this maple leaf. So I'm kind of on the fence with this because I would like this to be white but it's not a white mug. So we're going to go for it and we're going to see this whole project is just to test how that mug is going to take this sublimation and um, I'm going to do this little helper video for them and for you and for everybody else who wants to see it so we can see what the process is. So as you can see I have my transfer and it's on an eight and a half by eleven sheet of sublimation paper. This happens to be Koala and testing out different products. I was using a sub had really good um, interactions with people who use koala so I thought I'll give the koala a shot see how it is and um, I do notice some differences between this and Aesop this is thicker seems to be a heavier paper they say it's got a coating on it I don't know if that's the coating I don't notice a coating but I can tell you it does definitely have a different uh, touch texture over ASAP. I haven't used any other papers besides these so if you have tried this paper and if you want to leave some leave me some information some feedback or comments or whatever go ahead and do so and uh, I love to hear what other input is because even though I do sublimation we're always learning so uh, we'll go from there. This needs to be cut down because our mug is the same as a tumbler around nine inches. I have six inches from this bevel edge to this bevel edge but I'm only going to cover I'm going to bring it down from edge to edge and uh, I know my phone is like really close up but it's because of this crazy stand I have but um, I'm going to bring it down for five and a half because I want it to kind of go in the middle I don't want it to go right from top to bottom I want it to have some breathing space at the top and the bottom so I'm going to cut this down and I have my handy dandy little cutter. If I can fit that in the frame, we'll see. So I am going to find 
my center point on the sheet. Now, bear with me. I work in inches because I'm old like that. And uh, this is not exactly 11, so I'm going to take it to the center. And I'm going to mark this as 5.5 between this mark and oops, this mark here. And then, whoops, again, this way, eight, just a little shy of eight and a half, move that over. So eight and a half and eight and a half is four and a quarter. So this is my center, right here and right here. I probably think, oh my God, you're writing on this paper with a, this is a pencil, lead, but this is not sublimation lead. This is not going to create a gas and dye anything that I put it on. So I use pencils a lot for all of my registration marks, which this is, because it doesn't go anywhere. It's safe. So I can write across this whole thing. It's not going to bother it. So if I'm nine wide, I'm going to go from my center point out to four and a half here. And then I'm going to go from my center point back this way to four and a half. And then from this center point up, because I want five and a half. So. Um, that seems to be a little bit close to her bun, isn't it? That's okay. Should be okay. So two and three quarters, and then two and three quarters. That uh, looks okay. That looks okay. This is my top or not my top, my tallest graphic. This graphic and this graphic is perfectly sized or centered going, um, you know, this way comparison to each other. So what I want to make sure is I have equal space between the top here and the bottom here, even though this doesn't have sublimation dye on it and it's not going to transfer anything. It's going to help me place it on my tumbler a lot easier if I know this graphic is right in the um, the center of my paper. So now that I've got these registration marks, I'm going to in here is a wire, and that allows my little cutting blade to slide up and down. So I'm going to try and fit this all in the frame. There's a guide up here that you can nest your little paper up. I, I need a bigger cutter, but this is just a, or I have a bigger cutter, but this is a smaller page, so I don't need to bring out a big one. I'm having a hard enough time getting this in the frame as it is. But I want to make sure that this wire is over that registration mark, and then I'm hugged up against the top nice and easy, or tight. I'm going to slide that up, take this away. That's one side. So I'm going to do the same. I'm going to hug that up to the top, make sure that this is over my registration mark. And I'm going to take that away. Now for the bottoms. I'm going to make sure that this is all lined up nicely. And one more. There we go. Now we're all cut. We're even a lot more easy than using scissors. As you can tell, I need to change my blade out. You can buy those little slider blades. I usually run mine through a bunch of aluminum you know, you know, a few dozen times before I decide that it's just not going to cut anymore. But it worked. That's all I needed it to do. So what I'm going to do now is take my mug 
and I'm just gonna grab a couple of things of tape. I usually use just a like this, uh, just to make sure that it doesn't roll. So I'm gonna take my lint roller and hold onto the bottom and into the top like this, I guess. Be a little, a little bit easier. I'm going to just roll all around to get anything that I picked up from the table off. Because remember, I'm going to apply an ink onto the surface of this. If there's anything between that transfer paper and this surface, it's going to negate or zero out that image from going into the metal. Don't want that. So, I'm actually going to roll my surface too, just to be on the we're good side. Because, you know, just my little things back here. I've seen some people use some pool noodles, and I think I'm going to do that. Um, I have a mug press, so I don't usually have to worry too much about it. But I don't have the tumbler press, which is going to be an add-on that I'm going to be doing at some point if I get more into tumblers. But right now I bake it in a in a convection oven that I only use for this. I don't use it for anything else. So I'm not going to walk you through that process. I might put a little clip and speed it up or whatnot, but that's that. So we have heat tape. This is special tape that won't melt back or get destroyed when it goes into... Um, the convection oven. So I'm just going to get that ready. I have a little pair of snipping scissors that I'm just going to cut the tape with. And um, usually what I do is I'll tear off, I don't know, three or four just to kind of line them up. I have them hooked on the, the end of my table. As you can see right here, with my phone, I hope I don't trash it, but I just have a couple prepped there um, so I can easily grab them and then uh, tape this down. So there's no, no seam, there's no beginning and end, it's all just one big huge cylinder. So that helps in me not worrying about where I set this. If is it over here? Is it over here? Just I'm focusing on the equal distance between the end to that bevel and then the top to this bevel that's just starting to go in. And when I have equal surface there, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it around, making sure that it's nice and even. Overlap on this isn't a big issue again because I don't have any image is all blank spray. It's just going to be the black and it's just going to be the chick with the glasses and the bandana. But I do want that to go down first because I have more white space here. So the goal here is to put it down and make sure that I'm even only because there's words and you know you don't want words to be all wonky. So. I'm just going to kind of slide this around a little bit, get it in place. I really need a better phone system or camera. I just kind of pinch it and push it and uh, give it a good squeeze. When you got it in place, snap it with some tape. Right now. I usually put it on one side and then pull it a little bit more and for the middle again put it on one side and pull it over so I'm not going to go through a big spiel about how I wrap and and whatnot I have some shrink wraps I can't find the heat gun I'm so excited I got them today or yesterday I can't remember the world's a blur right now but I want to it's a sleeve you can put this in you can use your heat gun and it'll shrink and just like a you know wrapping a you see the sailboats and stuff it'll cling to it and hold it nice and tight so I'm going to wrap all this and then I'll come back
timers off and here we go fresh out of the oven like fresh fresh let me zoom this out a little bit there the the heat on this is is incredible um the recommended heat settings is 400 uh six and a half minutes and I don't know, it just seems a little long. 400 is okay, a little long on the six and a half. So as you can see, the image has uh, is uh, wicking through, which is good. We want that in sublimation. And um, even on this side, it's wicking through. But you can see the paper's just, just starting. Like here, there's some discoloration just starting to burn. So I think the five minute call was right. Um, I will tell you that the recommended settings on this is a guesstimate because I had to go to several sources and find um, more information about this this tumbler. It's not one that I have. Like I said, this is a test run on it. Um, and we're going to try and come up with uh, what the settings are and uh, go from there. did see, to show a little bit of my convention number. It's just a standard um, uh, as a Hamilton Beach convection oven. It's never to be used for anything else ever, ever again. So if you're going to get into tumblers, you have to consider that. If you don't have a, um, like a mug press for a tumbler that hooks up to a heat press, when you purchase your convection oven, it's not a guideline. It's an actual toxin risk. This ink turns into a gas, and it's seriously toxic. If that gas is permeating into that heat, that, that convection oven, you can never cook food and eat in it, ever. Can I just get past the really loud vehicle outside? I got my window open because it's a hot day, and I've been on the heat press, and I've got the oven going, so it's a little hot in the studio today. Um, so yeah, I just I just can't emphasize that any more. Never ever ever cook food in your convection oven after you've done tumblers or mugs. You can bake mugs well. As well, you never put this product in your home oven. Ever. <laughs> okay, so I can touch it now. It's cooling down pretty nicely. I got a nice fan going here. So I'm gonna see if we can peel off some of this tape. This is the bottom tape, so it's going to take the seam at the same time, which I like. And you can see this tape didn't melt. It didn't uh, burn up. It didn't do anything. It did exactly what it was supposed to do. Hold this graphic in place so it can bake. Uh, sometimes, too, I use spray adhesive, like that temporary release. I use it uh, actually, I shouldn't say actually. I use it on all my sublimation projects. I didn't on this because it's not typical. And I wanted to do this test case just as like a typical application. Um, so, but I would use the uh, spray adhesive. And I just went and reached for it. I usually keep it down next to the to the to my convection oven and I decided probably because of this little symbol here it was wise for me to move it but it's just for those who are French there you go voila uh, spray adhesive you know repositionable you can spray a little bit just a smidge goes a long long way it'll help grip it won't move it I use it for all my all my sublimation jobs even fabric and uh, helps hold it in place so, trying to get this tape off and not, uh, you know, burn my finger off at the same time. So, oh, I wanted the other side. Hold on. Because if you take the last piece up, it'll pull all the pieces before it. Ta-da! Well, I'm excited. You know, the heat inside the can is still, still there. one and the last one and are we ready crush fingers crush fingers let's hope 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 aha so 
not too too bad um kind of sweet kind of savage because no one ever said that about me and then the messy bun girl I have my hair in a top knot all the time so this is pretty cool but as I suspected you can't really see the colors there's not a lot of color definition with this red because it's a translucent ink right and I mean even the black took on this metallic um, cool effect I mean I like it it's I don't think that it's a bad thing but I guess my best advice for this is um, stay away from colors go with black applications um, you know I went with just the two colors the black and the red because I wanted to saturate some color I don't know if you can hear my dog he's freaking out he can't hear anything but he hears apparently in his brain he hears everything and he needs to be very vocal about it um, but the red is not red the red should be like this right Canada fly red yes not so much but I mean my intention is there so I'm happy with it and I absolutely will use this and it was easy and it cools down actually I think quicker than the you know the the white or even well I've never done the stainless steel just stainless steel tumblers but the white tumblers the 20 ounces and whatnot I find that it's in here still a little a little snappy after a couple of seconds but for the, I mean, I'm holding on to this. This is, and this is kind of cool to the touch. So that's, that's good because what that means is you can actually work on several at a time and be able to move them aside and make space. I have here two things that I use. I have this mat, which is plastic. Okay. This is plastic, but it's ridged. As you can see, it's got these grooves. And then I have this big silicone um, Matt Betty Crocker. I've used this in for so long. It's a cookie sheet out of the Betty Crocker line. But I put this on top of the the gray mat, and it causes or it creates rather these air channels, so the heat can go through and it'll dissipate, and this protects my surface. But my surface is still a little warm, which is wood, right? But this is it works perfect on my license plates, the key tags, the dog tags tumblers, mugs out of the heat press. They all go in here and I've never had an issue with it. So just a little FYI if you're looking for something like that. Super easy to do. We have both of these items at the Dollarama. Not the Dollar Tree. The Dollarama. So yeah, overall I like the cup. I think it's worth it. I would say stick to black ink. Stay away from colors. And uh, I mean this is great. Now on the bottom of this one, it does say, well, it says do not mark microwave, but I mean, this is metal. So, you know, people, we don't put metal in a microwave unless you want to blow up your microwave and have a fireworks show. Um, but it says hand wash. Now, typically, tumblers, you can dishwash. This says hand wash. They know their product. I'd go with this label, hand wash only. Um, and this will never fade or peel. It's not a, a applique. It's dyed right into the metal. So, yay. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Let me know what you think. Bye.